Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little, and today I'm excited to share with you a little bit of my newest book, Excelling at Tough No Limit Hold'em Games. This book was inspired by my first Excelling at No Limit Hold'em book that featured chapters by many of the best live poker players in the world, and I realized that, well, I get to study from many of the absolute best players in the world, both live and online, and many of those players are coaches for the Pokar backing company, which I am an advisor for. They back many, many people in online poker tournaments and live poker tournaments. And they have a unique setup where they essentially take players who are playing small stakes games, who are winners at small stakes games, and then coach them all the way up until the point that they are winners in the highest stakes games. Many of their players have gone on to be number one online player in the world. And I get to learn from all of them. And I wanted to share some of that great content that they have produced for their backies for you or share that with you. So let's go through the table of contents. As you see right here, to GTO or not GTO? That is the question. This is by Rob Tinian. Rob Tinian is one of the main managers at Pokar and he's won the Sunday Million two times. It's pretty fortunate. And he discusses, well, whether or not should, you should play GTO or not. Some of you may already know the answer to this if you've studied my content, but he goes through it. Next, Matt Brown discusses quick tips to crush the small stakes games. I realize this is a book about how to beat tough games, but you do want to make sure that if you are in the small stakes games, you crush them hard, move up quickly, and get to play in the medium and high stakes games against much tougher opponents. Here we have um, additional exploits that you can apply passively, passive strategies to crush the small stakes games. And then I have a chapter on adjusting your preflop strategy to take advantage of whatever your opponents do wrong and also what the players do wrong in the general medium and high stakes games. Next, we have two excellent chapters by John Van Fleet, Ape Styles. He is one of the biggest winners in online poker and he discusses when to continuation bet and also how to defend against continuation bets from out of position. These are very common spots that you will very often find yourself in. And if you do not know how to play them well, you're just going to be lighting your money on fire. Next, Alexandre Mantovani Cavalito online. He is a world-class player. He discusses how to play shallow stacked from the blinds. It's another spot you're very frequently going to be in, and I bet a lot of you are messing that up. Then I have a section on navigating multi-way pots. This is another situation that I think a lot of people play very wrong. They very often will play way too loose, way too splashy, way too aggressively in multi-way pots. I've done a lot of work with a program called Munker Solver, and it, well, lays out how to play fundamentally sound in, in multi-way pots, and it also discusses how to exploit players in multi-way pots. Here we have a chapter by Chipsful, Leading Turns from the Big Blind. This is when someone raises, you call the big blind, you check the flop, they bet, you call. Now the turn comes. When should you lead? He goes through all of the common spots and some of the very uncommon spots where the GTO solvers recommend leading. And if you do lead in those spots, you're going to print money. Here we have many additional other chapters. Alex Carr, Pokar, was started by him. He discusses making opponents indifferent to calling or folding, which is the basis for many fundamentally sound strategies. We have a chapter by Louise on not being afraid to go for it. So many people know they should go for the bluff, but they just don't do it. And that results in them, well, never succeeding, never making really deep runs. You want to know why you don't make deep runs? It's because you play like a nit and you don't go for it. Speaking of playing like a nit or not, good punt or bad punt, again by Chips Full. Um, Rich Hoadley, this is a fun chapter where he goes through a bunch of triple barrels where uh, maybe he played them great, maybe he didn't. Next, mastering ICM. Look, I'm pretty good at ICM. I played a ton of sit and goes, but I learned a lot from this chapter by Vlada. He goes through many situations, both preflop and postflop, shallow stacked and deep stacked, discussing ICM play. Another chapter I learned a ton from by Bert Draft Ganger Stevens. Medium stacked, final table strategies. He introduces limping and how to develop a good fundamentally sound and perhaps maybe not so fundamentally sound limping strategy at final tables in order to still play lots of pots, give you a chance to chip up and make, well, the most out of your medium stack, which normally you have to play very, very tightly. Shows why he 
is always at the top of the leaderboards. Next, progressive knockout tournament strategy by Cavalito again. I was always a little bit, um, I guess scared is the right word, to play peak progressive knockout tournaments because I haven't studied them at all. But after reading this chapter by Cavalito, I decided to hop in there. The very next day, I made two very deep runs in them. I was collecting loads of bounties. It was very, very nice. I was very, very happy that I um, hooked up with Cavalito and we... Well, he helped me get good at progressive knockout tournaments quickly and efficiently. And we also give you, if you get this book, a progressive knockout tournament calculator so that you never have to guess how many chips a bounty is worth. Now you will know just by plugging in a few numbers. Next, we discuss adjusting to live poker chapter by me. One of the things I help poker with is, well, live poker backing. I know a lot about live poker, and there are some adjustments you should make from online to live, and we discuss all of those. Next, Improved by 1% Each Day by Alex Carr. Believe it or not, poker is not only played on the felt. You need to make sure that you are always actively working to improve yourself. At the end of the day, poker is not about just winning a lot of money. It's also about making the most out of your life, and Alex Carr discusses that. Next, EV Big Blind Per 100 and Table Count, two very important concepts that a lot of people screw up. A lot of people don't even care about EV Big Blind Per 100, which is roughly how much you would be winning if there was no luck involved, if you ran neutrally in all the all-in scenarios instead of winning some and losing some. And also table count. A lot of people play way too many tables. I'm sometimes guilty of that. And also some people play way too few. Rob Tenney discusses pumping up the volume. You need to play lots of volume. Turns out volume really does cure variance. And if you play, well, one tournament a week, you're going to have infinite variance. And finally, Ben discusses how to be a successful poker backy. And to be fair, it's kind of how to be a successful poker player because poker makes successful poker players. So let me show you a chapter. Uh, what's a fun one? Uh, let's take a look at uh, Leading the Turns from the Big Blind by Rich. That's page 170. Let's go down here and find a page 170. Went a little bit too far. This book will be available in print version. It'll be available in ebook. It'll be available in audiobook eventually. It is currently June 2020, so we're in the midst of the COVID-19 issue, so all the recording studios are closed. I've not recorded yet, but I will get around to recording this eventually. So leading the turn. The purpose and benefits of leading the turn. So he goes through this. Theoretically speaking, the out-of-position player wants to lead the turn when it favors their range from both an equity and expected value point of view. So then he goes through what equity, expected value are, et cetera. And uh, let's take a look at a few common spots. I'll show them to you. So the most common turns to lead. Four, a low four card straight turns. For example, say opponent raises, you call big blind, flop comes eight, seven, five. You check, they bet, you call, and the turn is a four, right? This is a situation where you, as the big blind caller, have a lot of sixes. And your opponent, unless they raise from exactly the button, probably doesn't have a whole lot of sixes because they just wouldn't play a whole lot of hands containing a six, right? So this is a turn card where you get to lead with some straights, some two pairs, and also with some bluffs. If you check these hands, though, it's going to go check, check very frequently, and then you don't extract value with your straights and your two pairs, and also you don't Get your bluff through with your obvious bluffing hands that would like to bluff and some hands that just have very, very low equity. Next, middle card boards. Say it comes ace, 10, eight, you check call, turn is a 10. This is a spot where if the preflop raiser raises in this scenario, they're very often going to check it behind on the flop with their middle pairs and their bottom pairs. And that's going to result in them not having a whole lot of those in their range when they do bet the flop. You, on the other hand, would always check call with your 10s and 8s on the flop which means when the turn comes a 10, it favors your range. Now, this becomes even um, more compounded uh, whenever the middle and bottom card are lower, and also the board does not contain, let's say, a high card like an ace that very, very heavily favors the opponent. Of course, you also lead with some bluffs as well to make sure you're balanced. As we see here, bottom card pairs, we just discussed that. And then another spot, low three-card straight turns, Again, if, you, if they connect very, very well with your range, that's the time you want to be leading. And it's important to understand, how does this connect to my range? He then goes through his merits of small bets, merits of big bets, and then some common exploits. There are lots of solver images in this book. Now, all these solver images, 
don't presume your opponent plays the perfect GTO strategy. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they'll presume your opponent plays as the player pool generally plays. So let's see. There are a few more spots that were particularly neat. Let me scroll down here. Uh, let's see. Again, very, 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 very big book. Book's 400-something pages. Um, well, just take a look at this image. There's a few images in this chapter like this. This essentially shows you when you should be leading on various turns. So this is a board of eight of clubs, six of diamonds, four of clubs, okay? Eight, six, four, two clubs. This is a spot where when you check call from the big blind and the turn comes, well, any of these cards, it tells you how often you should be betting and how often you should be checking. The All the cells that are not highlighted, these are all cells that you want to be checking basically every time. The cells that are gray, you're betting a small frequency. Cells that are pink, you're betting at a medium frequency. And cells that are red, you're betting at a high frequency. So notice, if the turn card brings a five of diamonds, hearts, or spades, remember the board is eight, six, four. This heavily favors the check caller, at which point you should be leading very frequently. And notice here, you're actually leading with... Um, a five that completes the flush less often. Now, why is that? Why would you want to lead the five that connect, connects less often with a, if, if it, uh, what am I trying to say? <laughs> if the turn brings three clubs, why would you lead less often? Well, think about it, right? That actually is still okay for the preflop raiser because the preflop raiser is going to have some flushes in the range. And those flushes are usually going to be nut flushes. But as you see here, when it comes eight, six, four, five of non-flush, you should actually lead here roughly 95-ish percent of the time which is huge. Most people aren't leading every single hand in their range in that spot. There are also a few very specific high frequency turn leading spots. For example, ace of diamonds, five of diamonds, three of diamonds, king of diamonds. You may say, hmm? Well, think about it. This is a spot where if early position raises and you call the big blind, they bet this flop, you call. On a turn king of diamonds, who has more queen of diamonds than jack of diamonds in their range? Well, interestingly enough, if the early position player is not raising queen-jack offsuit and jack-10 offsuit, which most people don't, they really only have specifically ace-queen, queen of diamonds, ace-jack, jack of diamonds, king-queen, queen of diamonds, maybe. And that's it. They could also have pocket queens, pocket jacks. But if you think about the number of combinations that is, it's actually relatively few. And you're going to find that whenever the turn, the flop and the turn... Well, there's four diamonds on the board, and the ace is on the board, and the king is on the board. This is actually a very unique spot where you get to lead very, very frequently, at least some chunk of the time. As we see here, when the turn is one of the diamonds, you get to lead eh, some portion of the time, right? 57% of the time if it's one of the high cards. And it makes sense that the high cards are going to be especially good to lead because... On the high cards, that's when you have more of the random queen or jack of diamonds, right? So lots of spots come up like that. Um, here's another scenario, ace, well, ace, queen, seven, ten of diamonds. On this, um, in this scenario, let's see. Well, anyway, we go through lots of scenarios. I'm not going to sit here and read the book to you. In this spot, there are some spots where you do get to lead very, very frequently, and most of you do not. To be fair, I do not nearly as often as I should. And that's going to result in you making errors and you don't want to make errors. So again, lots and lots of game theory optimal solutions in this book, lots and lots of high level content. This is a high level book. If you want a book to teach you the fundamentals, if you think this book may be too advanced, check out my other book. What's it called? Mastering Small Stakes No Limit Hold'em. I have a lot of books. There they are all, all are back there. All of these books I've had my hands in and I've made content for all of you. I hope you've enjoyed them. If you have, type in the comment section the book you like the most. So anyway, this is Excelling at Tough No Limit Hold'em. I learned a lot making this book. To be fair, I made this book because I wanted to give myself an additional reason to sit down, study a ton, and really grind it out to improve my skills. And interestingly enough, I've been playing a decent amount since we've all been stuck at home recently, and my win rate is higher today than it has ever been in online poker. And that's because I've been working with many of the absolute best players in the world to improve my skills, and I'm giving you all of that in this book, Excelling at Tough No Limit Hold'em Games. So anyway, check it out. Um, you can pre-order it right now at jlpoker.com tough. 
you can uh, read a full chapter there right now if you want to go check it out. Also, um, whenever the book's available, that's where you'll be able to go to buy it as well. It should be released, um, I think, July slash August 2020. So if you're watching this a little bit later, um, that is still where you will go to get the book. JLPoker.com slash tough, T-O-U-G-H. Thank you very much for watching this. I hope you enjoy the book. If you do, let me know in the comment section. I worked really hard on this. I always think these books that are a compilation will take no time to make it all. They end up taking many, 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 many hours. This book took about a year and a half to get from start to finish. And I'm very, very honored to bring this content from the Pokar Backing Company to you to help you be the best poker player you can possibly be. So check it out. Good luck in your games. Have fun. Click like, click subscribe, and I'll talk to you next time.